the camp of the PDP. So much has happened in that camp that if I were in the Nollywood sector, I probably would have a series, you know, from uh, the G5 to all that the former governor of Ekiti State has said and several other things playing out in the camp of the PDP. Well, that party has referred the Benue State governor, Samuel Autumn, to its disciplinary committee for alleged anti-party activities. And the party, however, suspended former governor of Ekiti State, Ayodele Fayoshe, and the former Senate president, secretary to the government of the Federation, I am Pius, I am uh, other party officials were also suspended, and they are Professor Dennis Iseria and Dr. Aslam Aliyu. Now, let me go to you. Let me start with you, Punabo. Do you see this move strengthening the party? Before Is it going to strengthen the party? I, I, I was supposed to have left at the All okay. right, before you go. Well, I'll take this on this. Yeah, before okay. you go. Okay. Do you see this move by the PDP strengthening that party, or do you see it further weakening the party? What ought to be done ought to be done. Notwithstanding whose house is gone, uh, probably you might consider the consequences that like that is unsentimental ground. But my greatest worry is why the name of a man like my governor, Yusuf Mizoru, is not even on that list. Hmm. Because his own was fragrant. He went to Lagos State and just openly the Lagos State governor for a second term. He openly said he supported Bolano, Timidu, and so on. So what could be more anti-party than this? That's what that's 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 a conundrum. That's that's one question. That it's a burning question, question mm -hmm. that the PDP should answer. Never, nevertheless, the elections are over. So I think it is time to uh, clean the urgent table. Probably the PDP wants to purge itself of the so-called woes in the party. The likes of um, um, uh, at Autumn, the suspension didn't come to me as a surprise. The G5 government, I am so pleased that despite the high blood pressure of the certain rhetorics, they could not perform. They are an enemy of deeds. They all lost, save the bastards. And when the courts adjudicate on that matter, we will all see what the courts will but say concerning like the Because it's in court, because it's in court, I don't want to go into that. Okay. You know, the already matter is a court, so okay. let me go into that. What happened in reverse? But then, even at that, if you talk about, we are not talking about anti -part. This is a man who kept castigating Antipu. He does no name all the betrayals and so on on um, the uh, party chairman and so on. And even said the PDP was not going to win. In River State, the court will know whether the PDP won or not. But that is the first time. These were G5 members, in, in, uh, according to my government, integrity. <laughs> men of integrity. Yes. You know, now, if you're a man of integrity, you will leave the party. You're a man of integrity. You will leave the party and fight the party. You will not remain there and still call yourself a man of integrity. Now, look at all the other governors. They lost even in their units. I keep telling people, I say, PDP did not lose anything dissociating itself from the government. Because I'm not a party member. I'm not a member of any political party. Because I said before now, even on your station, on several locations that don't vote for parties, vote for them. not parties. So you do not. So that investment foolishness must end. So I voted across party lines, but I I kept saying this since last year. I'm not. It is not the party that will bring uh, bring about good governance. You are talking about Nigeria because in Nigeria there is no ideology, but in civilized lines you have ideology. So you must. Go, you can never be Buhari telling Nigerians that he was not part of the party's manifesto. So the party, talking of party in Nigeria, just a complete waste of time. I go for the individuals based on your antecedents or my perception of you. And that was what I even on your station, countless times. I said, please go for individual. Because when the rain will fall, it will fall on every roof. Okay. Well, so considering the choosing, let us be careful. Now, in this case of PDP, hmm. they all lost. The governors who were in charge of three senatorial districts lost in their units. They could not even deliver their senator to their various parties they formed alliance. They could not even deliver. So it was no use. So they really had no effect. Unless you talk of uh, River State. Well, the court will decide who won in River State in the presidential election. 
let the court decide that. Let me go not go into that. So on the issue of the suspension, it came late. I just cannot understand the dilatory. The, I must tell you the truth. The uh, leadership of the PDP lacks function. It lacks the courage. It was thinking at what will happen. Uh, maybe if I do this, what are the consequences? Damn you! No human being on earth is indispensable. You will think that in your absence, your child will die. You will be surprised that it is when you go that your child becomes the first person. No human being on earth is indispensable. So don't give any human being a particular asset. This one is no, let us not do that. And that is the bane of our country. Because every time you look at the court of Madrid in prison, although I'm against it, but it is the law. But I will all, I would have also done the same thing to save my child. But it is their law. But if this had happened in Nigeria, nobody would have heard about it. You would have seen even his press secretary shouting left, right, and so that telling the world, denying all kinds of things. And you see that at worst, there will be long indefinite adjournment. But look at what happened. That is the kind of system we want. They would have been suspended before the electors. I called for it. Hmm. Before the electors. And the governor would have said, dare them to suspend them. Yeah, he did dare them. them. Well, open up, open up. Yeah, the party. And you remain, you kept him there. I, I can't understand what is going on. So, as far as I'm, the PDP came late, and I'm not happy with the PDP leadership. Completely not happy. They are cowards, I'm very sorry to say. They are cowards. Oh, well, I, I, now, I would to, have after asked after you. Election, after election, you're coming to suspect. After Be election, you're coming to suspect. Because uh, you believe that all votes will have been cast and you don't need them again. That's cowardice. You know, time would yeah, not permit me to ask you this question. Um, perhaps when next yeah. you come and uh, you would ask, answer the question if events have not overtaken it. I'm whether you ready. see this, whether you see this as the beginning of, of the end of the PDP as we know it. But you, you say you got to go. Not at all. Not at all. Conflict is a function of interaction. And because man cannot not communicate, man is prone to conflict. Resolution is what matters. All right, thank it you so like much. Opunabo Unko. It is like a barrack. Soldier go, soldier come. That's good. Opunabo Unko Taria, thank you so much for your time. Johnson Argo, legal practitioner, is still with us. We're going to go on break, take the news, and come back. But Mr. Opunabo will not be able to join us because he has uh, to run. Thank you so much, Mr. Opunabo, for your time and insight. Well, the program, the run up, continues after this break. Stay with us. Welcome back to the concluding part of uh, the Roundup 2023. I am Maureen, and I still have Johnson Argo, legal practitioner, as my guest. And as I told you before, went on that break, Opunabo in Kotaria uh, will not be able to continue with us uh, on this segment. Hello, Johnson. Good to have you back. It's my pleasure. Thank you. All right. So let's continue from where we stopped. The PDP and all that's going on, the suspensions, the disciplinary actions, long time coming? You see it as something that should have happened before now. Please come again. I didn't get the question. All right. I'm talking about the drama going unfolding uh, in the PDP camp, the suspensions, the disciplinary actions. Do you see there's something that should have happened before now, as alluded to uh, by uh, Punabo? Actually, um, I think that that is their family business. <laughs> I am not a member of the PDP, and um, I, I don't have sympathies whatsoever to them, especially uh, considering that what the complaints that have been brought to the public is a question of impunity and um, blatant breach of the con uh, of the party's constitutional provisions. So uh, the lawyer in me thinks that rule of law should permit every strata of the society, including the subsets of our democratic institutions. Uh, in this case, political parties. My thinking is that the impunity we see in the society didn't come from thin air. Right from the family groups, mm. time unions, market associations, people who have had obligations to comply with rules uh, might not comply with them if there are no consequences. 
And in the case of PDP, it is a political party who is jostling for power to control the entire government. My thinking is that such an institution or such an organization should be stickler for rule of law and compliance with its own rules and constitution. And so when they do not comply with their own rules and constitution, as they all claim, they should not tell us to just move on. So, and um, in my view, they are not qualified to complain to anybody at all. So if, for example, you say you are suspending people because they did anti-party activities, how do you measure anti-party activity? Is it by reference to what your constitution has said members should do? So the person who is attempting to apply the constitutional provisions of PDP now, where was he? when PDP, uh, 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 the current people controlling PDP now, sidesteps the constitutional provisions of PDP. That's a big question for me. Mm. Equity, in my view, is something that people should approach with clean hands. So if you are trying to apply a stick on people today because you say they have breached the constitution by campaigning for other people who are not PDP members, you should also apply the same big stick to yourself for, um, um, or to all the people that sidestep the constitution of PDP to put somebody who is not supposed to be the PDP candidate by reason of PDP constitution. It's a, it's a big, it's a chicken and egg situation. All right. It, no. And if you continue to argue about it, we will keep going round and round. So PDP should cry internally and resolve their problems internally. And if they choose to bring it to us, members of the society, we will judge them harshly. Well, we it, it, it's already it's up to, it's out here now. Public, yeah. uh, I mean, family problem or family issue or not, it is out there in the public space because it is a public family. All right. Now, one of the controversies that these yeah, uh, actions have thrown up is the fact that mm -hmm. Governor of River State, Newsom Wiki, has not been suspended. He's not among those who have been disciplined. Matter of fact, matter of fact, matter of fact, he has responded to all of this and said that it is the chairman, Iocha Ayu, of the party that should have been suspended and not uh, the former governor of Ekiti State, Ayodele Fayoshi. How do you respond to, to these controversies from uh, the Ra State governor? I'm saying that the governor of River State actually has a, a court case seeking to restrain um, PDP from um, suspending or in any way interfering his right of membership in the PDP. So um, until that case is decided, whether it is rightly instituted or wrongly instituted, it will be difficult for anybody to uh, um, uh, tamper with the rest of that, I mean, the subject of that court case. So I will not um, um, discuss that direction. Oh, okay. But so, re, in, a, in, in re, other re, words, there is a, a legal umbrella re, shielding him re, from re, any kind of action from the party. So, he, to speak. he has a court case saying that the, court, the party should not sanction him for uh, a so called anti party activities or whatever, whatever. So, and that case has not been decided. So, uh, regarding um, AKT governor's suspension, he says it's openly that he doesn't care. Uh, we are listening to him some few days back uh, the, when he was asked about suspension or no suspension, whatever. He, he, he claims he works against the PDP and he's very proud of it. He doesn't regret it. So uh, suspending him uh, currently by the people he says are not uh, are also in breach of the constitution of PDP seems to me... Um, a useless venture because he is not his soul is no longer in the pdp matter of fact if yeah. i recall correctly i saw him on national mm. television distancing himself mm. from the party even before the suspension came about but Absolutely. how do you see how do you see the strength of the pdp with all that's happening right now do you see their strength dwindling from all Obviously, these actions pdp is the bigger mod uh, in dwindling stage if we look at it properly you know there is this thing we look at rise and fall of powers. PDP is declining. Let's face what it is. 
the NNPP that took Kano is actually a faction of PDP. The Labour Party that took the entire southeast, uh, most of South South, some part of North Central, and even Lagos, unprecedentedly, used to be in in PDP. And if we look at, I'm look, looking at the, the results that, um, announced by INEC. I'm not saying that that is the correct result, but using the result that is announced by INEC, we can see that all the these two factions that I have just described, if they were with the main PDP, so-called, represented by Atiku and Bubaka, they would have clearly won the election. The Fiosi, um, Mark Inde, and Wiki team, a, a faction of PDP, clearly or boastfully say they worked for APC. So this election was conducted instead PDP against PDP, obviously. <laughs> And what do someone say when a house is divided against itself? Cannot it stand. clearly has to fall. That's the way I see it. Unless um, a miracle happens sometime to hold the party or the house in, in, in position. But we know that once a house begins to divide, the next thing that we should they expect is a collapse. So you're saying that bearing any kind of miracle that PDP may just, this may just be the beginning of the end of that party. Yeah. Absolutely. Those that won elections under the umbrella of PDP in this last election will have two options. They can now claim that the PDP is factionalized. For example, I'm not giving ideas, but we've seen this in the past. Somebody is said to have been suspended, and the next thing you see on the radio is he organizes a meeting and claims to suspend every other person that uh, is in the clique that suspended him. So that is a factionalization of the party, formal factionalization of the party. And on the basis of that, they will decamp to another party and retain their seats. I know that the courts have said that if, for example, you're a legislative um, assembly or a legislator, a member of the legislative body, and you want your, your seat on the flag of another party, once you decamp to the next party, you will lose your seat. But the court have also said that if you decamp, because of faction activities, when there is no unity in your party, you will retain your seat. So PDP, their leash on their party or party members seem to me weak because quite a number of people um, seem to be genuinely agree. And those people who seem to be genuinely agree can bound together and decamp and retain their seats. And PDP will be empty. If I am to recommend to PDP, my uh, suggestion is um, to find out what exactly the grievance of all of these uh, persons and see how they can politically resolve it. I don't see a legal route out of this crisis. It's a political issue. So mm -hmm. they should sit down and see what they can give and take between themselves, promises they can exchange, and assurances of keeping the promises that we interest the various parties. Well, thank you so much, Johnson Argo, for your time, your insight with us on this program, even before today. And I'm saying this and speaking like this because we've come to the last episode, this very episode. Oh, wow. It's the very last episode we'll miss, of the we'll run-up. Uh, we'll miss this program. I would have asked uh, for an elongation, ten year elongation, if I was asked. No, but we <laughs> have a similar program every morning called The Breakfast on this oh, program fine. so that is another that's place fine. to tune to that's fine. my thinking is that this program is even beginning because um the court cases uh from uh, coming from the election petition tribunals are going to be very interesting all that will be handled on the breakfast which comes up every morning on this station i think 7 to 9 a.m every morning every day monday to friday so all of that is going to be everything we treat on, or we've been treating on the run-up, plus other issues will be treated on the breakfast. That's so thank great. you so thank much you for, for your time. Me. It's been so wonderful having you. Uh, it's been an amazing couple of months discussing issues on Nigerian politics and the 2023 elections. It's been a huge pleasure having you, the viewers, always tuning to join the show. 
I want to say a big thank you to all our guests who have joined us virtually and in the studio, and to all the crew members who have worked on the show. To all the anchors, Nyamgo Agaji, Debayo Oloake, we say a big thank you to you. And please stay tuned to PLOS TV Africa as we bring you various media contents for your view and pleasure. I am Maureen Menon Wizigui. See you next time.